here, folks. Hallelujah. Hey, some of you have been praying for some promises. He hadn't forgot about you. Hallelujah. It may not be here right now, but it's coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My, my, my. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want to remain standing, I feel like a, the Lord has talked to me today, or for today. Amen. I give honor to Pastor Burks for his confidence in me. I thank you all for your confidence in me. And I'm thankful for the presence of the Lord. I'm grateful for my beautiful wife. The Lord gave her a beautiful voice. He did not give me one. And so she makes me complete. She is my better half, and I'm so thankful for her. And I'm grateful for all the, the many blessings that God has given me. Amen. I'm not going to preach long. I do feel like I've heard from God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. We'll begin reading with verse 22. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for Pastor and First Lady to be home. I know I may sound like a broken record, but that's okay. I need my pastor. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 15, verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Mara, everybody say Mara. They could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it is called Mara. And the people murmured, against Moses saying what shall we drink and he cried unto the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters the waters were made sweet there he made for them a statute and an ordinance and there he proved them skip down to verse 27 And they came to Elam. Everybody say Elam. Where were twelve wells of water and three score and ten palm trees, which is seventy palm trees. And they encamped there by the waters. They camped there. Everybody say camp. Amen. With the help of the Lord, I want to preach just for a little while on this subject. Elam is just down the road. Elam is just down the road. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. God, we love you and we thank you for this day, your blessings, your goodness, your mercy. Lord, that you have allowed us to be in your house to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for this opportunity, God. And I pray right now, God, that you would bless every heart today. Anoint our hearts and ears to hear, to receive your word. Help us to be doers of your word, not just hearers only, God. We need you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Turn to your neighbor. 
and say, I'm going to preach with him. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Elam is just down the road. The children of Israel had spent the last 430 years living as slaves under the affliction and bondage of Egypt. When their cries for deliverance were heard, God raised up a man by the name of Moses along with his brother Aaron and sent them to Egypt to be his voice of consolation to Israel and a voice of opposition to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. With many miracles and signs and wonders, along with plagues poured out on the Egyptians, God brought a great deliverance for His people, and Moses led them out of captivity. God's hand of favor was unprecedented on Israel with the cloud leading them by day and a pillar of fire by night as they journeyed. When they came to the Red Sea and Pharaoh and his armies were chasing them, God showed them his power once again by rolling back the waters of the sea so that they could go through unscathed on dry ground then drowning their enemies as they attempted to follow. When the children of Israel saw what God had just done, the Bible says that they began to worship and praise God in song. They sang and they worshipped. They sang and they praised. They sang and they worshipped a little more. Then they sang and they praised a little more. The Bible says in verse 20 of Exodus chapter 15, And Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand. And all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And they danced and they sang and they worshipped and they praised God for His mighty acts. Amen. Then we read, or we read in our text earlier that, that Moses led them three days' journey and they could not find anything to drink. But as they rounded the corner, they found a pool of water, but it was called Mara because it was bitter. And Webster defines bitter as something being unpleasant. Three days from the miraculous, Israel found unpleasantness, bitterness, and problems. And for emphasis sake, I want to say that again. Three days from the miraculous, Israel found unpleasantness, bitterness, and problems. The Egyptians were still floating in the Red Sea behind them. And now they are faced with unpleasantness. The Egyptian chariots and armor were still washing up on the shores behind them. And Israel is faced with problems. The dust hasn't even settled from when they were dancing and singing and shouting praises and worship to Jehovah God and now they face Mara and you say this morning brother Stanley what are you getting at here what I'm saying is this shortly after the children of Israel saw God do the miraculous they found themselves with problems and unpleasantness amen but it was short lived because five miles down the road was a place called Elam. Just around the corner was a place called Elam. Amen. Just over the horizon, there was a place called Elam. 
And the Bible says that in Elam it was an oasis. And it had 70 palm trees for them to rest under. It had 12 wells of sweet water for them to drink from. 12 wells, one for each tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel to guzzle from. Amen. Elam was just down the road from their bitter situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let me get it to our level. If I've heard from God, I've heard from God. I promise you this. Now let me get it to our level of living. On February the 5th, Sister Aletha received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and was baptized in Jesus' name. While we're still rejoicing over that miracle, six days later on February the 11th, the Holloway's transmission goes out in their suburban, the only vehicle big enough to carry them. Mara. We're still rejoicing over Sister Letha. And a few days later on February the 11th, the transmission goes out and costs thousands of dollars. Mara. On February the 5th, we baptized Sister Kara, Sister Renee in Jesus' name. While still rejoicing over that, February the 17th, Pastor had an aneurysm form on his brain and was life-lighted to the woodland. No aneurysm, thank God. It's been healed and it's been deleted. But he's still in the hospital. Mara. Unpleasantness and bitterness. On February the 5th, we baptized brother and sister Galloway. While still rejoicing over that, the, this past Sunday on February the 19th, their baby girl right back here had an allergic reaction to some meds, and it could have been fatal, the doctor said. Thank God it wasn't. But after rejoicing over their baptism, Mara. On February the 11th, little sister Aubrey received the baptism. Uh, let me back up. On February the 5th, we baptized little sister Aaron. And while still rejoicing over that, uh, on February the 19th, brother Todd Hall had a heart attack. Mara. On February the 11th, little sister Aubrey received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And while still rejoicing over that, on February the 20th, Brother Barra is in the hospital, MRI showing a, a stroke, another stroke. Mara, unpleasantness. On February the 19th, Brother Mark Hine praying in the altar. Brother Austin Park receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost. While we're still rejoicing over these two men, amen, on Friday afternoon, I come up here to the church and I find out that the refrigerator has gone out. Sorry, Pastor, I was going to tell you about that, but I was waiting. And now Sister Irvin's going to have knee surgery. These are all that's coming about after this fact. Sister Irvin's going to have knee surgery. Brother Royer's having chest pains. We I don't know if you know it, folks, but since the, uh, the 1st of February, we've seen a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. God has done some great things in our lives. We've been rejoicing over people receiving the Holy Ghost and being baptized in Jesus' name. But then we run face to face with Mara. Hallelujah. You say, Brother Stanley, what are you getting at here? What I'm saying is this. Shortly after New Life Church saw God do the miraculous, we found ourselves with problems, unpleasantness, uh, drinking from Mara. But this past week, while studying, praying, and fasting for this moment right now, the Lord gave me this message and said, Tell New Life Church, 
You may be at Mara right now, but let me tell you something. Elam is just down the road. Hallelujah. And at Elam, there's rest. At Elam, you can drink from the wells. Amen. At Elam, you can camp there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Psalms 30 and 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. You may be facing Mara right now. You may be drinking from the bitter waters and wells of Mara right now. But friend, Jesus told me to tell you that just five miles down the road, there's a place called Elam where there's rest for the weary. Hallelujah. My. Amen. I want you to notice something. That whenever the children of Israel arrived at Marah that day. You'll find nowhere in scripture. Where he told them to stay there. Why? Did they not count there? Because Mara is just a place you pass through. God is saying if you're going to camp somewhere, Mara is not the place. It's bitter there. It's unpleasant there. But Elam is just down the road. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you'll find in Scripture there, my friend, where Moses instructed them, camp here. Hallelujah. And friend, if you're here today and you're facing Mara, if you're drinking from the wells of Mara, amen, don't pull out the tent there. Amen, don't unload the firewood there. Amen, don't split the wood and put the tent up there because the God said that's just a place you're going to pass through temporarily. Amen, if I'm gonna, I want you to camp when you get to, my, to Elam. That's where the victory is. That's where the promise is. Amen, that's where the campsites are. Amen, that's where the wells are. That's where the sweet water is. Amen, that's where you need to stay. That's where you need to camp. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Let's worship him right now. Thank you, Jesus. My, my, my. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 4, we find the story of the Shunammite woman. The Bible said that Elisha had went to Shunem and was ministering there. And there was a lady there, a wealthy lady there by the name of, they didn't give her name, but they called her a Shunemite woman. And there was something about her that recognized the man of God. In fact, she told him, said, uh, when you come by, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to feed you. And she did that. And then she went to her husband and said, Honey, I realize that this is a man of God and we need to take care of him. So why don't we just build a little room on the roof of our house up here. Let's put a bed in there and a chair and a lamp and everything he's going to need. That way when the man of God comes by, he'll be well taken care of. The Bible lets us know that it was just a few days down the road that they, that uh, Elisha and Gehazi, his, his uh, servant, showed up there in Shunem. And as a result of all the goodness that this lady had done for him, she, uh, Elisha sent word, said, tell the Shunemite woman to come see me. So she came to, to the room and stood at the door, and, and he said, what can I do for you? You've been taking care of us. You've, you've fixed this room. You've provided meals. You've done all this. What can I do for you? Can I speak to the king for you? Can, can, I, can I talk to the, the armies for you and put in a good word? She said, no, my family takes care of me. I'm good. And then she left. A few minutes later, he looked at Gehazi and he said, there's got to be something we can do for this lady. And Gehazi said, well, I don't see any toys. 
Now I'm just paraphrasing here. This is this is Wesley's translation. I don't see any toys. There's no footballs laying around. There's no Barbie dolls laying around. You know what those are, don't you? There, there's, no, there's no basketball goal. There's no bicycles. There's no baseballs. There, there's no bat. There, what, what are you saying, Gehazi? I'm saying she don't have any children. And Elisha said, call her, tell her to come here. And she returned. And Elisha, the prophet, looked at her and said, this time next year, you'll be holding a baby boy in your hands. Now, apparently, somebody must have told her that in the past, and it didn't come to pass. But he said, it's going to happen. And she said, no, don't, don't, don't play with my emotions here. Don't, don't lie to me. He said, I'm not lying. I promise you this time next year you're going to have a boy. And she did. She had that child. Hey, Amen. I, I don't know exactly how old the child was. The Bible does not let us, let us know. It says he grew. And so I, I would say somewhere around the age of 8 or 10 years old, hey, man, he had done grown to that age. And every morning I can just imagine Hey man, uh, the Shunammite woman, just like be, being just like uh, 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 the children of Israel, whenever they saw the Egyptians covered up, when they saw that victory, they began to dance and worship. I could just imagine as being her being like Miriam. Maybe she picked up the timbrel and the dance every morning and said, God, I want to thank you for my baby boy. Amen. I want to rejoice. I want to praise you. I want to lift up your name and thank you for what you've done for me. I'm still feasting on this promise that you give me. I'm still feasting and enjoying everything that you have blessed me with. I'm going to praise you. Every morning, allow me to use my imagination. Every morning she praised him and she worshipped him and thanked him for that baby boy. Amen. And on that particular morning she got up and she grabbed that tambourine like Miriam and she praised him one more time. And then she gave him some breakfast and out the door to the fields he went with daddy. And while out there in the sun and in the heat, uh, working in the fields, uh, the Bible said the little boy began to cry. His head was hurting. My head, my head. And then he passed out. Brother Burke's going to attest to that. Amen. The daddy said, told a servant, said, grab, grab this child and take him to his mama. And when he took that child and laid it in the mama's lap, hey amen, she sat there and watched over him for hours until about noontime, and then he stopped breathing and he passed on. She sent for her husband, said, send me another servant with a, with a donkey, and we're going to go ride, and we're going to find the man of God. And they left. Hey Amen. And she rode with that servant on that donkey. And they proceeded towards Mount Carmel where they knew where Elisha was at. And the Bible says, I want you to hear me in 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 25. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass that when the man of God saw her afar off, that she said, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is the Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, it is, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, and what did she say? It is well. I ask you this morning... How in the world could a woman who had danced and shouted and praised God for a child all those years, uh, amen, uh, all of a sudden when this child is taken from her, she shows up to where the preacher's at, uh, and the preacher said, is everything well? She said, all is well. Brother Allison, I have to believe with everything within me, she realized this is just Mara. 
This is just Mara. This is a place of unpleasantness. This is a place of bitterness. Hey Amen. This is just something that I'm going to pass through. I'm not going to camp right here. Hey Amen. Because I know uh, by reading uh, and understanding how God works, uh, hey Amen, that Elam is just down the road. Hey Amen. And the Bible said she went to that man of God uh, and she fell at his face, uh, at his feet, uh, and cried out to him. Uh, hey Amen. And a long story short, she, he went back to her house and found that baby laying on the bed and he covered over the baby and prayed, amen, and life came back to that child and he presented the child alive and well to her, her his mother. Amen. What I'm saying was uh, there was just a small point, uh, a brief time of Mara that she had to drink from. Uh, it was just a moment of unpleasantness. Uh, but she knew that just down the road uh, was a place called Elam uh, where victory was at, uh, where healing was at, uh, where rest was at, uh, where sustenance was at. Uh, hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you folks, uh, amen, we may be going through a Mara situation right now, but on the other side, just five miles up the road is a place called Elam where there's victory for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Praise God. My. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Aren't you thankful that Elam is just down the road? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm coming to a close here shortly. In Mark chapter 5, we find the very familiar story that my precious wife just sang about. Amen. The story of Jairus and his daughter. Mark chapter 5 and verse 22. And behold, there, came, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him. Now, this ain't part of my notes. But folks, we ought to do that every morning. Fall at the feet of Jesus and say, I want you to come to my house. Amen. I want you at my house every morning. Amen. That didn't cost you nothing. Verse 24, and Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And while he yet spake, there came, I'm sorry, verse 35 was after the woman with the issue of blood had interrupted his journey. Amen. But in verse 35, it said, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house a certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Amen. He had done went to Jesus and found him and said, I, My daughter's sick and she's dying. I need you to come home with me. And Jesus started down that road. But he had to perform a few miracles or a miracle before he got there. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood. But in verse 35, while he was finishing up there with that miracle and fishing ahead on to Jairus' house, verse 35 says, While yet he yet spake, Amen. There came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. She's no longer sick. She's dead now. Why troublest thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid. Only believe. Jesus was saying, Jairus, you're just going through Mara, son. But Elam is just down the road. Hallelujah. There's people sitting on the sound of my voice here today. You're going through some things. Maybe a broken promise, a broken dream. Hey Amen. Situations that are completely out of your control that you can't fix and you couldn't even dream about fixing. And you're faced with that bitter water of Mara. And it's unpleasant. And it's problems. 
and, and, and there's bitterness in your, in your soul, in your mind. Hallelujah. But just hang on. Because just five miles down the road is a place called Elam. And everything you need is going to be there. Hallelujah. And he suffered no man to follow him save Peter, James, John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult. And, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel. And them that were with him and entered into where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and saith unto her, Talitha kumi, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was at the age of 12 years old, and they were astonished and, great, and with a great astonishment. Amen. Why were they astonished? Because they'd all been living in Mara. They'd all been living in that bitterness and that anger and that upsetness and unpleasantness and all the, the negative things that comes along with the, the, the place called Mara. Hallelujah. Amen. But what Jesus walked on the scene, amen, he took them by the hand and he led them five, down, five miles down the road to a place called Elam where there was victory. Hallelujah. Can we stand? Hallelujah. Amen. I believe with everything within me, the Lord talked to me this week for, with a voice of encouragement for New Life Church. Hallelujah. There's been anguish in our spirits. Amen. There's been doubt in our minds. Amen. There's been, there's been trouble in our nights as we lay there wondering about the future and the problems and the situations and how this is going to take its uh, course and how this is going to go and how we're going to pay this or how we're going to buy this or how that's going to work out. Uh, and, I, and that whole time we're laying there and we're drinking from the water of Mara. Hallelujah. And everything that has to do with Mara is unpleasantness. Amen. But Jesus is saying today, let me take you five miles down the road. Because that's where Elam's at. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be here today and you're standing at the pool of Mara. And there's bitterness there. There's unpleasantness there. Close your eyes right now and let's, let's look through the Spirit. You're at Mara. There's no campsites there. There's no firewood. There's no place to pitch your tent. Because Elam is just a few miles down the road. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to open up these altars today. Amen. You shouldn't leave here without the victory today. Amen. Jesus is here right now walking the aisles of this service. Saying, come on, let me take you by the hand. I'll lead you away from this place of unpleasantness. And I'll lead you just a few miles down the road to a place called Elam. Where you can find rest. Hallelujah. Would you come today as they begin to play softly? Amen. Find you a place to pray yourself through Mara on into Elam. Hallelujah. Praise God. We need to leave here with a victory today. Would you come? God bless these that are coming, praying. Hallelujah. There's absolutely no reason you should leave an apostolic church without the victory. Hallelujah. When everything you need is right here in His presence. 
Aleluia. can 